this is our sine cosine encoder that we've been working on. It has uh, the position sensor uh, chip in the center, and it has a few op amps and a few protection diodes on it. And the op amps are to create that stable reference voltage and not to also buffer the output so that you can have uh, um, some resistor dividers on the inputs on uh, the VAS controller, which makes it a bit easier to use in some cases. Um, here it is mounted to a C155 motor, and uh, the whole pattern should also work. I think it also works on the QS165, and you can also cut out the center of it, and uh, there should be available for download a step file of the center, as well as an adapter that you can uh, adapt to make it fit other motors as well. Um, we'll also include a free CAD file for it where you can open it, and then you could go to the first sketch and just update the whole pattern and then 3D print this one. When I print this one, I usually just uh, tap directly into the plastic. So the holes are two and a half millimeter and then um, I put in two M3 screws into the tapped holes here. And then you can put that on any motor, given that there is enough space and probably other ways to attach it as well. Um, I will start by showing how to connect it and talk a bit about why I would want to sign cosine encoder. So a few of the reasons are that um, it is not as sensitive to long cables as other encoders are uh, because you have two analog signals and uh, the bandwidth of them is also quite low and um, it only requires two pins so um, or it requires plus and minus obviously as well but it only requires the sine and the cosine pin and it doesn't need to wait for an index pulse so you have an absolute position right away Another advantage is also that uh, if you disconnect any of those, if you get a fault, it's quite easy for the software to detect it because it will very soon fall out of range, the output of it, when you get a fault. Um, the other pins on this PCB, so it is a 6-pin connector on it, as you can see, and a 2-pin connector. And the 2-pin connector is only so that you can plug in a temperature sensor and route it to the 6-pin connector that goes to the motor because most motors, like the one I have, the C155, as you can see, has a temp sensor that goes out in the same cavity where the enclosure is, or where the encoder is installed, and you can just plug it in there. Um, another advantage is also that uh, the sampling of the sine and cosine signals is done in the ADC um, DMA interrupt, so it's sampled exactly at the same time as the currents, and it doesn't take that much computations to get it, make it into a position. So this one is fine up to full speed on these motors. And when you have an IPM motor like this one, it can be very fiddly to tune the observer because they have a lot of inductance and they also saturate when they push them. So just having an encoder can make it a lot easier to use these types of motors. Um, also, this encoder runs from 3 volts to 5 volts, so even if you have a 3.3 volt supply and you want to use the, some older vesk made hardware that has only the ADC1 and ADC2 channels, you could also use that, but it might be a bit more fiddly to configure it in vesk then. So here I have it connected. Um, I also have the maximum data sheet here. Uh, the device I have on the desk, by the way, is the Pronto, but it has the same... Uh, connector as the Maxim, and this will be a standard connector that we'll be using on many of the upcoming devices. And then you can see here on the sensor row here that we have Hall 1 and Hall 2, and they also have ADC 3 and 4. And if you look in the table here, you can see that in uh, those pins, on pin 8 and pin 21, you have uh, the sine signal and the cosine signal of the encoder. You can actually swap them, it works both ways around for the detection. And um, yeah, this is the Pronto. It's a smaller version of the Max. We also have a Maxim here uh, with the lid off. It's very compact for the power and especially height-wise compared to many of the other controllers, it is much, much lower than them. So this one is exciting. And this one, by the way, we have 15 of them here and we do some testing. So hopefully this one will be the first 10 or so that will be on the website. We'll hopefully ship in maybe a week or so from now. And likewise, the encoders, we have them here. The reason they are not uh, available for purchase yet is that the data sheet isn't finished and the instructions aren't either. So that is part of why I'm making this video. So 
let's start by connecting to the Pronto. And we have a default configuration now. And essentially what you need to do is go to the um, census page and set the sensor mode to sine cosine encoder. And then you have to set these values. The easiest way to do that is to go to LISPM scripting, go to examples, and then you can search for sine cosine. And then you have two sine cosine encoder examples. I will load the first one, double click in it, it will show up here. And then I will uh, upload, I will screen this code actually. And then over here, I want to make sure that they have poll all active. And um, yeah, actually, I have to set the send support mode to sign cosine encoder for this to work. Um, so now, if you look at the sine and cosine output, uh, we should see the analog values that it has. And I can also go to the binding plot. And if I rotate the motor by hand now, you can see them change. And what you want to get here is you want to do slightly more than one rotation. You could also do it by just doing open loop. And then you want to get the um, amplitude and the offsets. And this script will just collect them as you go. And um, I think there might even be a detect apply config function in here. Yeah, there is. Let's use that one. And you see it takes a parameter of current and this one will run open loop for a bit more than one rotation and uh, get the samples that way and then it will store the config and uh, yeah then it should be ready to go let's try 50 amps and i will hold control and press r you can just also copy and paste this into apple here and when you run the command then Nothing happened. Let's try it again. Yeah, not sure why nothing happened now, but uh, we can try to debug this. Um, yeah, because we have a fault code. Um, make sure you don't have a fault code when you do this. And the reason we have a fault code is that this motor has... Yeah, I don't know what temperature sensor it has, but if you have the default one, it will show over 100 degrees motor temperature. So I will just set it to, let's see. I think if you set it to the PTC, uh, PTC sensor, it will, yeah, now it shows up if it doesn't give a fault code. All right, let's try this again. Press up and enter. And now we did a rotation and stored the config. And now if I read it and we go back here and go to the census page, we can see that we have uh, slightly different values here. They're actually quite close to the defaults, but you really want to get them exact because then you get the best performance. And now we can also try it. We can go to real-time data, rotor position, press encoder. And now if we go over to the motor and turn it, we can see that it is measuring the position. Now let's try using the encoder. I will go to the FOC page and I will just run the regular detection. Probably need more than 20 amps on this big motor to spin it up. One thing you can see now in 6.06 .06 is that you have this encoder row down here. And when you do the flux linkage detection and the encoder is enabled and you get the encoder data, it will also do the encoder detection here. And then you can apply all of that. And you have the encoder settings as well. And now we could set it to encoder and write the config. And we can even set the senseless ERPM to like 100,000. And then we will always use the encoder. So let's try that. Runs fine. 
another thing I can show here as well, which is quite convenient when setting up IPM motors, I will res uh, read back the default config. And then there is, uh, in the search, we see that there is this motor config IPM sign cosine. And the intention of this one, let's hope it works now, is to just do a full configuration from zero, where it um, changes the sensor port mode, does the encoder detection, changes encoder mode, and also changes those server settings to be appropriate for sign cosine encoders. Or for IPM motors, which this type of motor is, and also on a QS165, it should also be quite suitable, this script. So let's try that. Yeah, I have to stream it first, of course, because now I have the other one active. Here again, Control R. And it will also print out the problem if there is one. Fault code over voltage. Let's try it again. This could be because um, the motor is currently connected to a lab power supply. And uh, it sounded like it was a bit wobbly when spinning up now, and that could make cause some uh, high back <laughs> Um Not sure why that happens. I will give it a bit less input voltage and try it again. Yeah, this really is a live demo. And we can see also that the script will print the fault code that it got over voltage during flux linkage measurements. Um, yeah, that's not good for a demo. Let's set the current to... What is the detect current set to? Fifty amps. I think that should be good. Let's give it forty amps and see. Stream again. From start. A bit less current. On a battery, you wouldn't really get this voltage because uh, the ba a battery can sink some current, but this battery, this power cell back cannot sink current. So anytime the motor pushes anything back, the voltage will start to rise. And uh, when you have this much inertia and inductance, it will often easily oscillate when you have a power supply that cannot sink in the current. But yeah, uh, read the config out, and we have detection done. It's set to encoder, and we have. Uh, the correct values here and should be it's running just fine so uh, that is the sine cosine encoder uh, a bit long demo because we had some hiccups but maybe those are a bit useful as well to give some hints on where to how to debug those